I'm going down to the library, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. Gonna say hi to the dictionary, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. All right. Hi, this week I'm here with Jeff Hebel. Hi, Jeff. Thank you so much for coming. Hey, Dee. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, of course. So uh, the reason I wanted to get you over here is I see your car out front between the library and City Hall every single day. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of laughing about that with you um, at one point. You are considered a part-time mayor. Correct. And I am so curious how much time that allegedly takes and how much time it really takes because I see your vehicle out there all the time. Great. So I'm just so curious. Um, well, yeah, it's part-time, <laughs> and the salary <laughs> definitely reflects part-time. Uh, we don't do any of this stuff for the pay. Uh, we, do, we do it for what's best for the city. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, in, the, in the beginning, there's a lot to learn. Uh, I have the advantage of having served 12 years on the school board, so I know how to conduct a meeting. I know how meetings are run, uh, Robert's Rules of, of you know, Order. Um, but... Uh, you know, some some days are long, some weeks are long. Sometimes uh, I may not go in at all for a day or two. Mm -hmm. But uh, with uh, with social media and cell phones, um, my uh, I have my phone set up that uh, any calls to my city hall number go right to my phone. Oh. So the voicemail, and uh, I tried to uh, commit to and have, have so far succeeded in getting back to anybody that either emails me, messages me on, on Facebook, or calls me within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the mayors before me, I know Ron Carls, I think uh, I think he, he darn near worked uh, uh, 40 hours a week minimum. I mean, he yeah. was here all the time. Um, Diane, I'd see her car quite often, um, but, you know, uh, I, I didn't really pay attention. Um, yeah, I would say, I would say similarly, I did work with Diane as well, and it was, you have done the same where you're so easy to get a hold of. Right. And again, I mean, I think it, it's amazing in this small town. Like, I love that we can, in the small community, that we have that access to our sure. government. It's just um, hilarious that you're considered part-time right. when I am certain that you guys are putting in round the clock. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, is having been a police officer for 28 years, you're on call. Uh, right. Seven days a week, 365, 24 mm -hmm. hours. So I've kind of just taken that uh, into into being mayor, and uh, you know um, what what we have to understand whether you know even yourself, uh, city employees, uh, elected officials, we work for the the citizens, and uh, we provide a service. Right. And uh, those services are across the board, and uh, you know taxes aren't cheap, and uh, people expect to to uh, get answers. And uh, I think that we owe it to our constituents to be able to get back to them within 24 to 48 hours at, at, at a maximum. Um, you know, in your, in your case, uh, in City Hall, uh, you know, the weekends are the exception, but not for me, you know. Yeah. Uh, I just feel that if, if somebody has a concern over the week, and I get them, I get, I get instant messages from it's surprising the number of instant messaging I get on Facebook. Uh, you know, there's there's a, a excess snow over here. Uh, oh, um, but it's not know. surprising, Jeff. We talked about this when you were talking about running for mayor, and sure. I was saying I was expressing my you know um, respect for that. Right. That you know, it's easy to say what's wrong, right. and it's harder to come do the work and be the face of that. Right. And um, you know, it's just one of those, like, you'll, you understand as a police officer as well, as a member of the community, you'll be at the grocery store and people, oh, yeah. you don't get to wear your, like, personal hat anymore right. Right. in the community. You are just, you are mayor, and right. I'm going to bring my, you know, complaints, and I sure. wish compliments sometimes, too, sure. yeah. to you yeah. at the grocery store, at the restaurants. Yeah. You're never not on call. Well, having been the cooking cop, uh... I get people when I'm at the grocery store asking me what's for dinner. Oh. And they look at my cart for maybe like that <laughs> secret ingredient that I might be using. That's so <laughs> funny. That's so funny. And almost uh, feels invasive. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, when you're a cop, uh, you, when you're a, it goes with a job. You know, Public figures. In bigger yeah. cities, uh, cops are just a face. But in the smaller communities, everybody knows, mm -hmm. you know, everybody knows what you do. 
So yeah, um, I've embraced it. I've never had an issue. I've never had anybody really go across the line in either as mayor or as an officer. People will say, "I know you're not on duty." Kind of yeah. Thing, but, oh, they're um, very. Everybody's yeah. kind about yeah. it. Uh huh. Well, that's good. You had mentioned that there is a lot to learn. You know a lot coming in, um, or you knew a lot from serving on boards before. But what do you think, you know, you've been doing this about a year now, right? A year, almost just shy, a year. Just shy, um, yeah. what, what are some of the things that you have learned in the process? Uh, number one, not everybody voted for me. Uh, number <laughs> two is I'll never make everybody happy. That's a, that's the best lesson. Uh, I, well, I I told you that one before. Yeah, never. <laughs> yeah, you need thick skin, thicker skin than being a cop. I really believe. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, because I I do take it personal. Um, some mm-hmm. of the things I I made it clear when we were here in uh, last March that uh, I was I was going to turn over every stone. Nothing was going to mm-hmm. be off limits. Um, you know, the police consolidation that was a huge issue. Uh, I stand behind that proposal. Um, I've been accused of it being personal. Uh, yeah, I was able to get Calumet County officials to come up with a minimum of $1 million savings uh, over five years to, to be uh, vindictive or to, to get even. That wasn't the case. Um, what, what I wanted to do was, was try to provide an alternative to a, a, a service that worked. However, um, I didn't feel, and, and if people would have asked, aldermen were asked, and 10 times out of 10, people would respond, with, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I wish people would have asked. What I am surprised, you see it at a state and national level, and now I've seen it locally, that the narrative can be so skewed, the information can be so uh, blatantly false, but people aren't afraid to to say it to, to keep their side uh, in, at, at the top, uh, to keep them winning. And, uh, you know, the, the whole deal was what's best for the city. The, the, the bottom line is there would have been no change in service. Uh, the level of service would have remained the same, 24-hour coverage, everything that you currently have, but it would have been enhanced with the, with the, deeper, the deeper abilities that the county can provide. The only difference you would have noticed was brown uniforms and, so, and silver cars. But that's, that's over. Uh, the council voted to go with option two to rebuild our police department. Um, some, some members are skeptical that um, you know, we, we, we didn't really solve anything with, the, with that decision. But my focus right now is to back the police and fire commission 150% in trying to find a new police chief, uh, rebuild the department, and, uh, and move on from there. Um, mm-hmm. That idea, that uh, proposal, that it wasn't just me. Uh, an alderman had proposed this. It was in the Tri County, uh, in the Holstein Reporter, whatever it was called back in the 80s. An alderman had proposed police consolidation. Um, uh, alderman Bosma had talked about this years ago. Um, you know, it was, it was on people's lips. Um, I just was the one that pushed it forward to see if it was something that could work. I believe it would have worked. But uh, um, I, I, I think a referendum would have been uh, surprisingly uh, not what the small group that attended a lot of those meetings would have hoped for. But uh, we move on. Uh, yeah. We're moving on. The next issue, uh, uh, I'm really, you know, you, uh, when it, before I was mayor, I was real pessimistic about the city and its outlook. And now as mayor, you, I, I'm, a, I'm an eternal optimist. Uh, there's a lot of good things going on uh, that uh, just waiting to, you know, just mm-hmm. waiting to happen. Um, I think the Tecumseh News last week with the, with the funding that we've acquired and we're moving forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some prospective businesses that we've been working with. Two of them I found on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> they reached out. I saw that they were looking for a location. And I hit him up. I said, hey, I'm the mayor. Come talk to us. And yeah. do that with, with two of those individuals. And, and hopefully something will uh, transpire there. And, and uh, we'll, we'll, see, uh, we'll see, it, uh, see it come out positive for us. Yeah, I appreciate it. I feel like in thinking of all of what you just said, what the lesson, and I, and I do think this was something I learned getting into public wow. service and then sort of communicated or conveyed to you as you were running is that, um, one of the things I think you learn is that um, often there's going to be a perception 
of what you're doing and that might not align with what you're doing. Right. Um, and, you know, uh, it is difficult. There's, there are going to be decisions in any public role that are unpopular or uh, that not everyone is pleased with. And then you have to continue to be the face of them. And whether they go one way or the other, the work must go on right. and the show goes on right. and then you move on to the next right. thing. And that is really, you know, I think that has been for me one of the biggest um, challenges throughout my career was right. learning to not take things personal, right. that I am making decisions that people will be emotional about. Right. I find children and money. Right. You know, if it involves children or money, you're going to have divided opinions on it. That right. is just all there is to it. Um, and it is tough. So as I said before, I right. respect anybody who gets in the role, and I'm glad that you already came to the optimism. Sure. I think it took me a couple of years right. to get to the place of being like, always realizing there's new work to be done on the horizon. Oh, it doesn't matter what happened this time. Right. I'm going to keep working. So yeah, the Tecumseh thing is so exciting. Right. I was going to ask, what, what is something that's on the horizon that you're excited about or passionate about? It? Just the fact that we're going to demolish it. Yeah. You know? Um, you know, people have weighed in, you know, why didn't you let the county just keep it? What, yeah, and then have them sit on it for 30 years. Um, one of the things as mayor, uh, I believe that we really need to look at properties that are uh, are below, uh, you know, standards of what people expect their neighbors to, you know. Um, there's some properties that... Mm. Some of the aldermen didn't really want to get in the business of raising a property, but when you look at, uh, we've got one down on Main Street that has been that way for years. There's a hole in the roof that keeps getting bigger, and and I and my attitude has been that we owe it not only to the citizens because it, it reflects New Holstein as a whole, but especially those neighbors that have to live next to it. Mm -hmm. New Holstein residents take pride in their property. Mm -hmm. you know, and you we can... that meeting we talked where um, council and you had invited us as department heads to sort of throw out our visions right. for the community, and it was brought up. You know, addressing some. Uh, I think uh, Casey had brought up. You know, addressing some of those properties that are on the main street that might be more unsightly. Right. And I said, as an outsider coming in, you know, you get. You look at all of these well cared for. You're one block off of the main street, or some on the main uh, street there, that are just beautiful, right. incredible, historic properties, well maintained. Right. And then those few can just really damage the overall right. look. It that zoning stuff is so hard, though. I mean, we're talking about that in the city of Chilton as sure. well. And sure. yeah, I you so you're thinking maybe the city looking at you know in. How does the city address things like that? Well, there's with... ordinances about mm -hmm. that, that cover it. Um, it just, we need, you know, I, there was a gentleman in Kiel that addressed it in a letter to the editor about how, you know, you, you have these ordinances on the books, and they're there for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And blighted property is, is on there, and I just think that we not only owe it to the, 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 the residents of New Holstein as a whole, but those immediately affected by it because if mm -hmm. if the property owner to the north or the south is beautifully maintained but the house next to it is in such disrepair like the one in Maine um, you know they have no recall they're expecting us the city government to do something about that and mm -hmm. uh, um, I just feel so strongly that we need to do something about that when I when I became mayor, I, one of the things I did was I met with the, the Chilton, Keel, and Brilliant mayors just to see what works and what doesn't work and if, see if we couldn't collaborate on other things. And I asked them specifically about raising properties. And most, I think two out of the three or three out of the three, they had funds set aside so that when that became an issue, they, they were prepared for it. Where, mm. you know, right now... We don't have that. We right. have to dip into or find the funding for it. But I think we owe it to the the residents immediately around the property and and uh, and the, the the city as a whole. But it's not like hey, you don't 
you know, the one thing is, is mowing your lawn. It's like, as yeah. soon as I mow my lawn, I swear my neighbor next door gets out and goes, yes. Oh, my you gosh. You see that around the whole it, city. It, it, that, that Stepford Wives yeah. scene, uh, yeah. that is suburbia. Yeah. I mean, that is who we are. It's like, yeah. we have the same thing that goes on in our neighborhood. It's definitely not a race, but it's like, well, mine's going to look terrible oh, now. Yeah. You yeah. know, and it's the worst, let me tell you, when you live between a couple of retirees oh, who can, yeah. make, you know, I'm a full-time and a sure, mom and sure. all. It's like, we can't keep up with you. Right, right. No, yeah, it's, that's uh, funny. It's, it's, it's uh, the Wallstein residents, they take pride in their community and, and everything. You know, I, I just think that, uh, you know, people expect us to, you know, they expect something. You know, when mm-hmm. I, I started in Kiel and I was there for a year and, and I can remember the whole scene was the place to be, you know, and, mm-hmm. and then I moved to the Holstein, I worked in the Holstein for 28, 29 years, and all of a sudden Chilton and Kiel are growing, and, and the Holstein's going backwards, um, but, you know, we need to be optimistic, we need to do things, and, uh, you know, I, I made it clear that I believe in term limits, I don't think people should be able to rot in a position because you become complacent you're you're basically making decisions how you feel it should be you know our federal government uh i don't think our founding fathers ever expected them to be able to get a a pension and lifetime insurance and make a career out of it you know they would come in from the from the farms or their businesses for a couple of weeks take care of business and go back right now you know they're they're there for months on end they got residents paid for the taxpayers uh so you know, I'm, I want to get in and get as much done as I can do uh, in in a in a certain time period, and uh, and then uh, turn it over to the next mayor. So, yeah. So uh, you mentioned um, being optimistic, and you know, if if we're going backwards or even just staying, um, what is it in addition to optimism that maybe what does it take to move forward? What are some of the things? Maybe the flip side of that question, or it's both in one, is are there barriers to, you know, making progress, moving forward? How do we get our city from here to there? Well, it seems to me like, let's take Keel and even Chilton, for example, they're not afraid to take, you know, a couple of steps backwards to go a couple more steps forward, where, you know, I think New Holstein has been almost too conservative in the sense that... Uh, we, na- we may need to be a little bit more aggressive in, in how we approach things. Uh, you know, uh, the council, uh, just like any elected position, you know, it's, it's time consuming, it's, it's a thankless job. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, you, you have to appreciate what this, these men and women have done, on whether it's the school board or the city council, the county board, the town boards, whatever it might be, but, uh, You've got to be able to make some tough decisions and to just go into these meetings and just consistently all in favor say aye and be seven to nothing or whatever, eight to nothing, and not, you know, go outside the box isn't going to get us anywhere. And, uh, you know, the, the thing is, is um, I, was, I wasn't really the most uh, flattering towards City Hall before the election, and now being in there, I do see the the hard work that's done in, in both the utilities and the and the, the, the city hall side, mm-hmm. the street department, the police department, the utility, you know, the library, you know, Thank everybody you. <laughs> is, 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 is doing the best they can with mm-hmm. the, 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 the resources that they've given. Um, but I, I don't like the criticism that goes, you know, there's a lot of optimistic, positive people in New Olson, but there's always those uh, pessimists that as soon as something's posted, there's there's a negative, you know, why aren't we doing this, or why aren't we doing that? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things with our city administrator, you know, she gets criticized for, you know, why don't you do this, why don't you do that? I know the previous city clerk, is, I'd hear the same things, but you have to understand what their job description is and what it entails and what they are responsible for doing. And a lot of these things that people expect them to be doing are not in their in their wheel in yeah. their their scope of employment. But you know, just Casey Langenfeld, she's committed to the community. Her mm-hmm. and her husband and their partner have, have, have purchased the old Elite, and they've got big plans for it. 
if she didn't have the city's best interest in mind, she wouldn't have purchased that property. Right. And and it intends to do what what their plans are. Um, I think you know if if the plans and I think I believe they will. You know, go the distance. It's going to be beautiful. It's totally. going to be a, it's going to be the the gem that that building once was. Yeah. You know, when it was closed, and I had the option, the opportunity to. You know, we'd get complaints that, you know, somebody was in there or something and, and they'd get the opportunity to, you know, as a police officer, you get to go to the bowels of a, of a <laughs> building, like Tecumseh, you know. Yeah. Uh, having been in there uh, these, the last couple of years, the people that put their blood, sweat, and tears into the building over the, mm -hmm. the businesses over the years would roll over in their graves or roll, you know, just be sick to see the the decay and and damage that's been allowed but right. to go through the old e-light and go behind the stage where stuff was written on the walls mm -hmm. 50 60 years ago right when they had you know uh, somebody loves somebody with a heart just <laughs> right. all the just all the cool stuff the history you know? in the community yeah the community history yeah. is in those places you know and I, mm -hmm. i'm a history buff i like that kind of stuff and uh, you know the holstein has a lot of history you walk into City Hall next time, and I don't know if you've seen it, but behind the, the girls' desks on the wall, there's there's about a dozen or so or more pictures of all these entrepreneurs mm -hmm. over the in, in the 50s, 60s, 70s that that were in New Holstein. Wow. You oh, know? yeah. And, uh, you know, there's so much history. The Langenfelds. The, you know what, though? When the Paulies, the, it, you're saying this, and it, this is triggering something for me, it's like, you know, entrepreneur is risk-taking. Right. It, you really are just throwing your faith in that it's going to work right. out. And and that is when our community thrives, right. you know, through those um, taking big risks and making big moves. And I right. think you were kind of saying it. I think we stagnate when we are afraid to take big, bold moves, right. you know? Right. So, yeah, maybe. And I think that's what it's about. I mean, even you're talking about the Langenfelds taking, purchasing the, is it, they call it the Magdalena now? Yeah, is that, I think is that that's what it is. Correct. I, I think, I just never I didn't want to blow the pronunciation. I know, <laughs> me neither. Elite, I get that. I'm so bad. I'm notorious for doing it too. Sure. Um, but yeah, that's a, just an example of like making a, taking a risk, a personal risk to try to advance the community. And so maybe more of that. I, I just wonder how the city can take a, a like an active role. And that's like, to me, that is the big question with many answers, complex answers, no answers. Is how does city and city government you know, inspire people to do that and take those risks right. and continue to make our community advance. So right. I'm so glad to see that you have a lot of optimism about it and that you have a new perspective on, like, you know, that some of the criticism or the real, like, some of the thoughts of how the city was functioning and operating to come in and then see it and, you know, identify some of those same sure. barriers and see sure. what we see, that we are, yeah. everybody here, I believe, works hard, Errors, oh, you know. yeah. I mean, you look at there's there's a lot of there's several businesses that are, are committed and they're they're looking beyond the pessimism. You got mm -hmm. you got honeymoon acres that draws from mm -hmm. such a wide radius. The Altona, the grocery store, Belkin Associates, A One Polishing, CRW, Metco, they're all willing to keep going. America, you know, I talked yeah. to the president. He says they're not going anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. The buildings they do have in the city. You know, the, the biggest fear is that uh, we're going to lose another one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I made the promise of, of vis visiting all the businesses within the first 100 days. Well, the COVID put a big squash mm -hmm. on that. I have been able to reach out and meet with quite a few. Um, I still have some big ones on the list to, to get to, um, to see where they're at, to see where, you know, you know see what we can do. Um, but I think there's potential with the airport. I'd like to see us, you know, grow that into a, a bigger asset to the community. I, you know, I hope that uh, the ATD UTD golf cart thing, you know, takes off. You know, we haven't obviously we haven't seen golf carts because that would be, that would be <laughs> kind of nuts right now. But uh, there's been uh, uh, over a dozen permits taken out for the ATVs alone. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see us. I've already talked to the FAA about getting a path out to the airport, so when we do have the the Cub fly in, that we can get some golf carts in. 
rent them out to the, 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 the individuals that are there for the week to come into town, take advantage of all our businesses. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a couple of other groups that have inquired, have used the airport, so if we can expand on that. Yeah. I'd like to reach out to EAA and see if we can't get a bigger uh, turnout from them. You know, we are a puddle jump away from, you know, we've got everything. You know, right. Camping, the, the facility, you know, I'm sure all the hotels, all the, all the uh, places over there are booked. Mm -hmm. You come over here when you're playing, you can spend the week, you know, mm -hmm. you've got the hotel, you've got the Best Western. Um, there's so many, so many options out there that, you know, I just want to expand on um, and, and try to, you know, I've got the energy. Um, I'm, re I'm retired, but not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I'm busier now with my three jobs than I was when I was working full time. That's like so classic. <laughs> Take on more right. in retirement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. I feel, I think our construction's about to resume, so okay. I feel like we're going to get overwhelmed. Uh, I am so appreciative of your time. I have just, I, usually I ask a couple of personal questions. Maybe okay. I'll stick with just, if you could have, um, you obviously love food. Sure. The, the yeah, cooking yes. cup. <laughs> no, no, that's not how I meant it. The cooking cup. Yeah. You're known sure. for sure. loving food. Um, if you could have a meal with anyone, who would it be, and what would be served? Uh, you know, I've often wondered if that would ever be a question or anything, you know, and, uh, so I had to think long and hard, uh, you know, I, I, I probably should say my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get to have a meal, you get to have several but meals I, with her. <laughs> but, I, but I do have, uh, Brett Favre. Oh, that's uh, fun. Brett Favre, and what would be served, I don't know. He'd be raucous. Yeah, like that. but I'd have to include my mom because she's just as big a fan as I am. Uh -huh. um, I, you know, I really I can eat anything. I mm -hmm. really can. I, I I think I can I can cook just about anything. Um, probably we'd go with some Cajun. Yeah, something that Cajun. would make sense. Yeah, the Southern uh, roots. Southern. Um, but yeah, if it was with my wife, <laughs> she, if I didn't mention her, she'd probably make me cook tonight. <laughs> yeah. That is a, that is a very fair the the I would say premise of the question is someone different than right. sure mm -hmm. sure so sure. you know apologies to your wife but <laughs> <laughs> Brett Favre's a good answer yeah. I feel like you um, he would be like immediately you would feel like you knew him immediately oh, doesn't yeah. he seem like that type of guy where he's just like a down home country oh boy? yeah he could be sitting next yeah. to you in the bar having a beer and right like, oh, hey. <laughs> I, I really feel like that feel like you know celebrities yeah. well that's funny well thank you so much sure. for your time sure. for coming it. here today for all of your answers it's fun because i knew you were running back in i don't whatever february we had sat down sure. to talk about sure. doing the mayoral debate and so now a year later we're following up now that you've been in the role sure and i think everything i imagined for you is but it's like coming to fruition oh, yeah. so it's yeah. amazing uh well, i do have a facebook page a mayor page that uh, every now and then i ask the, the residents uh you know what what are their thoughts on this what are their thoughts on that yeah because you know my my number one goal is to try to make the whole team more resident friendly mm -hmm. in the sense that, uh, you know, they pay a lot of taxes and, uh, you know, just simple things like uh, winter parking can be a pain in the rear for anybody mm -hmm. that has college kids or have a lot of cars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't get the snowstorms we, we used to get, right. you know, things like brush pickup, you know, uh, at once a month, you know, you've got the little old lady that you know, jams everything in her little car or, mm -hmm. you know, can't pick up and take down to the dump, we should be able to provide that once a month, you know, right. and, and uh, without creating, you know, I don't want it, it's got to be specific and it's got to be, you know, you can't put the stuff out at the curb on Monday when we don't pick up to the following right. Monday because you got to respect your neighbors, you don't want it to look, you know, trashy, so working on things like that, but I do post things, uh, you know, ask questions and, uh, and uh, people aren't afraid to respond. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you're you're inviting. Um, it's wonderful. And also sure. you invite. Sure. And he'll, uh, so uh, you're proclaiming that you can contact you via Facebook, phone, email, sure. and you'll respond within 24 to 48 hours. Sure. 
Sure. And I've been I've been out mowing no. my lawn and people will pull up and ask if that's, <laughs> that's okay. Okay, perfect. All right. <laughs> well thank you thank again, you. Jeff. Yep. You have a great day. You too. Thanks. Hey, it's the director here, Dee Hankins, and it's my week for staff favorites. Um, and once again, I'm going to go with something non-traditional. Last time I mentioned podcasts and was really plugging our service of tech support or tech tutoring. Um, and this week I wanted to discuss a couple of the things that I check out from here that I take home at least once a week. I'm taking home something non-traditional to use with my three-year-old daughter, in fact. Um, and so the first is one of our STEM toys. It's the Caterpillar Twist. And she loves these things. I They're, like, so easy. Um, so I kind of recommend them to parents and grandparents. So if you have, like, your grandkids in town. And I have brought four of these home at once and then when the neighbor kids come over um, my three-year-old and the four-year-old eight-year-old and 11-year-old neighbor kids play with them as well so they're I mean they're better for young kids but really all ages and you can see all you do all the kids have to do is turn these little things and it basically codes in what the caterpillar is going to do and which way it's going to turn or whether it's going to just sing and once it's coated in, they set it on the floor, they hit play, and it starts going. And what I have found really fun is I put something in the middle of the floor, and then I have all the kids try to get the closest to it. So then they kind of code in what they think the path will be to get closest to the center of the floor. And then they pull them back and try again. And so it's really fun, like problem solving, and I love these things. And the other thing that I have brought home for my three-year-old, surprisingly, is um, one of our spatzel makers. Oh, I forgot that the caterpillar keeps talking, and he's like, hey, come play with me. Um, so I have to turn it off. So the, we have these, we have cake pans, we have a bunch of, like, cooking utensils, and we have a spatzel maker, and it is unbelievably putsy and fun and so it has a little recipe on the back and that works really well um it's just a cup of flour a quarter cup milk two eggs and salt who doesn't have that stuff at home so i bring this home sometimes on a weeknight and louise it's my daughter's name louise and i will follow the recipe i'll let her measure and pour into the bowl and mix so she does all that and then it's just this little machine and you plop this stuff in there and you do this over a pan of boiling water so she can do all of it obviously with the boiling water I'm quite cautious but I, I have taught her about steam um, and the little spatzel drop in and boil and then we get a little frying pan and we put some butter in there so she can do it from start to finish and then she's made dinner and it's so fun and rewarding and it's free to try um, and when we have it at home we actually make quite a few batches just because it's delicious. So those are my favorites and I hope that you come in and try something. Thank you. I'm going down to the library, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. Gonna say hi to the dictionary, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. I'm going down to the library. Shh.